All right, guys, check out this incredible office tour behind the scenes of the freelancer space. It's incredible. Check it out. I was blown away myself. Tell us about the video setup, Matt. Well, uh, a few things happened. One is I inherited a conference, uh, one that you've actually keynoted at, which is called StarCon. So um, many years ago, uh, Peter Cooper, who's well known in the startup space in Australia, he was running a uh, conference called SidStart, and that ran for many, many, many years and started literally with 30 people in a room and built up to, um, you know, today, 4,500 people. But he came on board to work for me one day and he said, oh, by the way, I've got this conference. Do you want to take it over? Yeah. So we started uh, obviously building the capability to put that conference on mm. and we've actually got some pretty state-of-the-art video stuff over here. We can actually run a mobile conference just with all this equipment uh, and we can load it all up. And when we run the event at Ram Week, we kind of take all this equipment with us and bring some staging in and so forth. And we run 65 speakers, four stages, four and a half thousand people, expo, and we bought some larger TVs. Because the problem with TVs is always a bigger TV. <laughs> uh, it's like a boat, there's always a bigger boat. Should we so, go for a little walk around though? Yeah. Out here, you kind of interact with people, you can talk with people, it's really fun. Yeah. It's really entertaining and you forget the buzz That's thing so as well. But yeah, here, Freightlancer, for example, this is Drew, General Manager, Freightlancer. Hey, hey, it's hey, Fred. Hey, John. <laughs> nice to meet you, Drew. So these guys move the most difficult bits of equipment anywhere in the world. So at the moment, it's mainly large industrial equipment, mining equipment, construction equipment, Sydney Metro, Barrick Gold Mines, Newcrest Gold Mines, things like that. Um, what we can do now with the power of Freelancer is in addition to the 8,000 transport operators which can go globally, we've got 32 million freelancers, um, most of which who can drive, who can you know, take something for metro delivery. So for example, if you've got like a flower shop or you've got like a you know, gift basket or wherever it may be, food delivery, you can use an API to get people to go deliver goods for you That's on demand. Incredible. So I mean, Uber's only got 2 million drivers and we have 32 million freelancers, most who drive. So we actually have a bigger network of drivers, potentially. What an opportunity. Yeah, so. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah and Good the technology allows us to filter out um, the, the different users so that if they've got, as Matt says, a driving license, then they can do standard deliveries. And then there's more sort of particular requirements for the bigger movements. Yeah, they're, and they're vetted and insured. And so and we make yeah. sure they've got their necessary insurances and that vetting process that we've got to tan you behind that as well, so. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good. Yeah. So being a listed company, you have to have a bunch of responsibilities. One yeah. is to produce an annual report. So Sam, our head of design, is now kind of working to get this out. So this is last year's report. Bit of magic. There you go. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's a billboard we had on the 101 freeway. Task humans from software, 27 million humans, location of freelancers. And it had little dots around the world where it's incredible. You can see that anyway, there's electricity over people. OK, this picture here is pretty funny because when we IPO'd the business in 2013, Twitter was going IPO in the US, the stock market was going crazy for technology. Big song and dance, we had a takeover off, a takeover off of the company that was quite public. Um, at the same time, we IPO'd the business. The share price on the day, the issue, issue price was 50 cents and we priced it there because it was about half the takeover price. And um, normally you expect the, the price to pop 15% on a successful IPO. So well, there's 50 media there, cameras are going crazy because it's all very public about the takeover and, the, and so forth. And um, I was trying to figure out where the share price was on the screens behind me. I was looking for like 65 cents, 70 cents, 80 cents, whatever it was. I couldn't find the number. I go, where's the share price? And they go, that's your share price. 2.50. And they said, ring the bell, because you know, give it a good ring because the last guy to IPO his company was a little Japanese guy and he couldn't really hear the bell ringing. So I was like 2.5 and I ripped the cord out of the bell and broke it. So I just held it up and the media went crazy and the head of the stock exchange says, this is what new technology does to old technology and so oh. forth. And so then they framed it and they sent it to me. I was in New York, it was a Saturday morning, admittedly a little bit hungover, walking down Fifth Avenue and they've got this these stores that sell um, ant well, fake antiques and all sorts of like weird stuff, knickknacks. So I went in and this had a price tag of 75 grand on it. And I negotiated the guy down to, I think it was like four grand, including shipping. And then he, and, and I thought I got a great deal. And then I realized you can buy them online for China for like two grand. But um, yeah, I got shipped from New York. What I discovered about freight is, it's very inexpensive to ship something internationally by shipping container. It's like 400 bucks or 800 bucks to ship a shipping container around the world. But to get it from the port to here, 
it's like three and a half grand. There's all these different fees, there's like 12 or 13 fees from customs for various things. And then the, the, the cartridge from there to here is just extremely expensive. So anyway, we've got the, and it, it fits in the elevator just. <laughs> I'm not sure how I get it out though. <laughs> Tell us about the awards, uh, what, have you, what have you won? Well, the secret about awards is once you've won one, they kind of give you award after award after award. So, um, 11 Webbies, they're like the Emmys or the Grammys of the internet. Oh wow. So they're, they're probably quite special. What's the submarine? Or is that a... Is that, a that. Spaceman? That's my award. So I thought I'd make it an award, which is like for showing initiative and leadership over and above your job. And so I've got a, that's actually a Russian high altitude jet pilot helmet. And we plated it in gold. And I've given it out once. What a business, man. It's incredible. Congratulations, man. This is, I can see the real grit it takes to make such an incredible company.